Hey friends, welcome to Homeschoolology. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here today. If you're new here, my name is Nikki. I'm a homeschooling mom of four. In the upcoming school year, we will have an eighth grader, fourth grader, kindergartner, and preschooler. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you things that I wish I knew before homeschooling or that I wish I was told before starting homeschooling. Today's video is a collaboration hosted by Daveen at Calm in the Chaos and Shauna at Homegrown Homeschool. Thank you to them for hosting. Don't forget to check out their channels and the playlist linked down in the description so you can hear all the other things moms wish they knew before they started their homeschool journey. Okay, so I have a list of eight things I wish I knew before homeschooling. Some of these are similar, but not the same. So I do, um, I, they are eight things that I wish I knew. So, so number one, the, probably my biggest regret or my biggest mistake in homeschooling so far has been in the beginning, um, you don't have to follow the curriculum exactly as it's laid out. So that really got us into some dangerous waters, I guess, in the very beginning. I felt like, especially with my trying to teach my daughter to read, we were using all about reading, and I thought I had to use it exactly as they told me to use it. Um, and it just led to a lot of struggle, a lot of tears on her part, a lot of tears on my part, and it just didn't go well. So I now, I say it often on this channel, but now I, um, I actually got this from Shauna at Making Everyday Magic. It's homeschooling curriculum is a tool so it's something that you use to help you along your way but what is most important is that your child is successful and not struggling to you know there shouldn't be tears involved you know a little tears here or there a little frustration here or there makes sense but literally it was every single day we were fighting we were crying we were yelling at each other and that is not what homeschooling should be so that is probably my number one that I think is just really important for you to hear. These curriculums are great, but these curriculums are not designed for every single child specifically individually. So you need to take what works for you and, and do that and then let the rest of it you know, go or not use it all or use it in a way that fits your style um, and fits your needs. So that is my number one. Number two is there will be days where you want to quit. Sometimes this is not an easy journey. Sometimes things will be going on in your life that just make it hard. Sometimes you'll have pushback. Sometimes you'll have other things that come up. There are going to be days where you want to quit. The best thing to do in those situations is to just take a break. Go ahead and actually quit for a short amount of time. Give yourself a week. Give yourself two weeks to get life back in order to reconnect with your children outside of the homeschool world and just give yourself that grace that you need to get back on track because it is a tough thing sometimes most of the time it is great and wonderful we love homeschooling it is something we will do as long as my children are happy to do it um, but there are days where I'm just like, oh man, if only I could just send you to school today. So it, you know, just know those days are ahead. And when those days come, try not to let them get the best of you. Try to just say, you know, maybe this is an indication of that. We need a break. Let's take a break. Number three kind of goes along on the same vein of the first two is that it's okay to quit. It is okay to quit a curriculum that is not working for you. It is okay to quit a co-op that is not working for you. It is okay to quit an activity that is not working for you. If it's not working for you, that's it. That's all you need to know. It is not working for me. I'm going to try something different. There are now are so many resources available to homeschoolers that it's okay to say, you know what? This one doesn't work. Let's try something new. So quit. If you need to quit, quit. Number four. So this one was especially hard for me coming from being a public school teacher. In my mind, I'm thinking it has to mimic what public school looks like. I'm thinking it needs to take a certain number of hours. It needs to be, we're sitting at a desk, we're learning these things. I'm standing in front of her, I'm teaching her these things. That is, you can homeschool like that. In my opinion, that is not 
a very good way to homeschool because it's not exciting. You're not doing fun things together. When we, we learn the most in our family when we are doing things that we are really genuinely enjoying and having fun. So you, it's okay. You don't have to structure your day like a public school teacher would. Even using all these lesson plan books and laying it all out and having these neat little windows, it, you don't have to sit down at the table and do book work for every single subject. Take those books and go outside and read them under the tree, you know, in a hammock. Or take your, instead of doing a science lesson from a textbook, go outside and do a science lesson about nature. Have them find different kinds of leaves. Talk about those different kinds of leaves, you know. Those kinds of things really keep homeschooling from getting overwhelming for you and the student. Um, and so... Definitely don't feel like you have to do what public school looks like, especially if you came from that world or especially if you're a public school teacher. It doesn't have, learning doesn't, that's not the only way to learn. It doesn't have to look exactly like the public school classroom. Kind of along that same vein is you can homeschool wherever whenever. So the wherever is kind of obvious, like you don't have to be sitting at a table. Like I mentioned before, you can homeschool on the couch, you can homeschool in the backyard, you can homeschool in bed if you want to, whatever works for you guys. You can homeschool in the kitchen, you can make things together and that's still homeschool learning. So there are, you can do it wherever you want to. But the thing for, that took a little bit of time for me to realize is that you can homeschool whenever. So is your child motivated to do the most of their learning? Are they asking you to do lessons at nine o'clock at night? Or nine, that's kind of late, but like eight o'clock at night, they're like, hey, I wanna do a lesson. Do a lesson. If that's when they feel like learning, that's what you should take advantage of. We in this household are not morning people, and so I kept trying to do homeschool first thing when we woke up, and it just wasn't working for us. We were not ready, we were not prepared, we were, you know, our tempers were not where they needed to be, and I just learned that homeschooling first thing in the morning not for us. So we now homeschool in the afternoon because that's what works for us. That's how we get the most out of our homeschool with the least amount of resistance and trial and all of that. So whenever also, if you are a working parent and you still want to homeschool, you can homeschool when you get home from work. You can homeschool on the weekends. There is no time that you have to be homeschooling. Now there are laws in some states that say you have to meet a certain number of hours, so you need to take that into consideration. But in my state, the only thing they have to show is progress, and I we could do that at any time. So doesn't matter wherever or whenever you do your homeschool, just get it done. Moving on to number six, find community. So in our first year, um, most of our friends at the time went to public school. So we were the only ones really doing public or homeschooling. And we had a few acquaintances here or there that might have like not lived where we lived. Um, and so the first year we kind of didn't spend a lot of time in our community, our home, a homeschool community. We were kind of on our own. And um, while that's okay and that can work, Having a homeschool community makes homeschooling so much easier and so much better. Having moms that are in your same situation that you can vent to, having moms who can you can learn from and share, you know, you guys can share what's working, what's not working, how do you make your kid do this, how do you make your kid do that, how, you know, like all, it just... And then my kids have friends, um, which has been just so wonderful for, you know, my oldest daughter, she was very socially anxious. If you don't know, that's why we started homeschooling and finding that community, you know, it was a smaller community at first and it's grown over the years, but finding that community really made a huge difference for us. They Number seven is kind of a little, um, you know, it's not, it's not like all of these, I feel like all these other ones are kind of like profound and big, big things for you. And this one's kind of a little not so, but it's something that I didn't realize. Um, and it's something that had really helped us in along the way. And it's that homeschool parents can sign up for a lot of teacher programs, be it educational things, be it like Barnes and Nobles and Books A Million and all these other places that have teacher programs, Joann's, I think Joann's, I don't remember exactly, but all of these different places that have teacher programs, almost always you can sign up as a homeschool parent as well. Sometimes you have to have a little ID, super easy, Google it, 
how to get a homeschool ID or how to make a homeschool ID. Um, super simple. You make it yourself. You print it out. You know, you can laminate it if you want it to look official. But almost all of these programs will allow homeschool parents to be involved in them and take advantage of them as well. So that is such a great resource. It has saved us so much money on many times on things like books and, and, um, printing and things like that so definitely make sure that you're checking out if you're you know a place where you go has a teacher program ask hey can homeschool parents sign up too and almost always they say yes so that is a really great tool and number eight back to the deep stuff um, remember that your child's relationship with you is more important than anything else it comes before homeschooling Thinking back to those early days where I was really pushing her, it was damaging our relationship. And uh, it took some time for us to repair that damage, for me to realize that this isn't what how this is supposed to be. Um, and so it took time for us to repair the damage that was done. So remember that your, your relationship with your child is more important than anything else. And so if that, you know, is, if that is starting to falter, stop doing what you're doing try something new maybe homeschooling isn't right for you and that would be okay like it's okay to admit that this isn't what works best for you guys um i do think that there are many things that you can do before putting your child into a different schooling situation you can try different styles you can try different curriculums you can try many different things but if you're if you feel like your relationship with your child is is not benefiting from what you're doing or it's causing any kind of strife between you and your child it's time to reevaluate so just remember just that first and foremost you are mom and child and that should become before anything else in the homeschooling world that is my list of eight things that i wish somebody would have told me before i started homeschooling kind of lessons i've learned along the way um, that i think would be helpful to somebody who is starting out Thank you again to Shauna and Devine for hosting today's collaboration. You can check out that playlist down below. While you're down there, if you have any questions about any of this, or if you have any tips that you'd like to share with somebody who would be starting out, something that you learned along the way, I'd love to hear all of that down in the comments. While you're down there, I would love if you would subscribe to this channel, ring that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram at homeschoolology, and I hope you will come back and chat with me again real soon, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.